Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Jake, you're watching Meat Source, and today um, I'm just going to run through basically the setup that I use to um, record most of my videos and um, get this channel going. This is, I decided that I'm going to do this video at the towards the beginning of my channel because this isn't exactly the, the stuff that I started off with, but after a few, like nearly a year of doing some video work, editing, um, production work, I kind of, this is what I ended up settling with as my primary gear. And I honestly feel like this gear will keep me going for a really long time. And maybe later down the track in the future, if this channel ever picks up any more, or I end up earning more money or spending more money on the pro, uh, on the setup, then I'll do another update video showing where that uh, the setups ended up kind of thing. So a lot of my stuff is budget, some of it isn't. But with the quality that I've got now, I'm really, really quite happy with. I think it's sharp, I think the colors are great. Um, so I figured this, if someone's looking to maybe start a channel themselves or end up with quality that's similar to this, I hope you don't mind it. This might be a good reference to, to get yourself going kind of thing. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. So the camera that I'm currently using is Sony A6300. Now, I'm gonna get another video recording here. So this is the Sony A6300 that I'm currently using. This is a kind of general gist of the whole setup, the whole rig that's going on here. Um, anyway, yeah, that's, so that's the A6300. Now I got this entire um, kit um, together, the lens and the camera body. Uh, that's an 18 to 135 mil, uh, millimeter lens. And <laughs> that is a cooling pad that I jam behind the screen. That's to keep it cool while it's recording in 4K. Now, the A6300 is a really, really good camera. It records in 4K, that is the reason I got it, but it only records at 30 frames a second, so that may or may not be a big thing to you. Uh, for me, it wasn't really a big deal um, because I only output my videos to 30 frames a second anyway. When you're recording in 1080p, you can go up to 60 frames and 120 frames a second and everything like that. And some of the videos I've done in the past, the main primary A roll that I record, I just do in 30 because there's not a whole lot of slow motion or cropping or anything going on there. And some of the B roll, that's where I'll record in a 1080p and at higher frame rates to achieve some slow motion shots and all that kind of thing. So I found this perfect at the price point because when you start looking at cameras that record in 4K, and in 60 frames a second or higher, you really start getting to the really, really high range, expensive cameras. And this one was perfect. I just wanted to be able to record my primary um, A-roll in, in 4K, and that way I can do my crop-ins and everything that you probably notice, where it comes in closer, then goes further away. But that's without actually doing any zooming at all, and you maintain quality, because I downscale to 1080p. So hopefully that made sense for you. If not, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll, I'll explain a little bit better. Anyway, so that's it for the camera. Um, now, as you can see, there is a monitor that I use. Now, back in the day, I used to uh, use a Sony RX100. That was my very first YouTube camera and that thing was great because it actually had a little flip-up camera. Uh, sorry, a flip-up screen that would come up behind it and you can actually see yourself recording, which was perfect. As, and it's because it's so close to the camera as well, every now and then, I mean, you'll notice me look up here. It's because I'm checking my framing all the time and it's a really bad habit. I've got to get myself out of it. But the fact that the 86, uh, sorry, the RX100 had the screen so close to the lens, you could look at it every now and then and it wouldn't be quite as obvious. So that's something that kind of sucks about the A6300 and they've come up with, I think it's the A6400 now has a, a flip up screen at the back, but you know, I didn't have one of those. And it's nice having the bigger screen anyway. So this is a, a field monitor or a, an external monitor for your camera, whatever you want to call it. This was the, the Tarion X7S camera field monitor. Now this thing is actually great. I lo uh, sorry, I love this, this monitor. It's not particularly bright or it's not uh, like any amazing, super awesome features or anything like that. It's basically just a HDMI monitor that plugs straight into your camera and that's it. It's got some white balance features and it's also got an audio monitor, which is super handy. And that's all I need. Now this thing, says 4K camera assist. The screen is not 4K, it's only 1080p, but that's fine. What it means is that it can actually take a 4K image and downscale it to 1080p, which actually is an issue with some other field monitors. 
they don't take a 4K image. So I don't need that to be 4K. I just need it to be 1080p. I just need to see what exactly I'm recording. So that was the whole reason I got the field monitor anyway. And it does great. I paid $100 for that field monitor, which is a really, really bloody good price. There are far more expensive ones out there, but this one does the job perfectly fine. That's video onto the audio. The microphone that I'm rocking here is the Audio Technica 8024. Now this is a little shotgun mic. Very, very tiny. Bring up the camera again. It's a very small little, little microphone. Comes with um, this foam uh, attachment. It also comes with a little furry attachment for your wind, what do you call it? Wind noise control, I guess you, you could say. And it just plugs into the camera via an AUX cable. Again, that's probably another good thing to point out. The reason why I got the A6300 is it actually has HDMI out and an AUX microphone input. A lot of cameras don't actually, well not, a lot of cameras do have it, but there are cameras that don't. And the RX100 was one that didn't have that input. So you always had to synchronize your audio post filming in post, however you want to say it. I prefer just, it's just so much, it's one less step if you can just have the, the camera record the audio directly. And like I said, I can actually monitor it and everything like that. So this is perfect for me. It's the way that all cameras should be. Now, as for this microphone, uh, it's basically, it's really good for this kind of, um, I suppose, interview type setup. Uh, so if you're indoors, like myself, I don't have any audio padding or anything like that. I haven't spent any money on that just yet. But the audio levels that I get at this distance are really, really good. It, it does really good at, at knocking out any noise, any high-pitched noises around around the sides and the back. And it's overall a really good microphone. I think I paid nearly $200 in store at JB Hi-Fi. I probably could have got it cheaper. Oh, I think I did get it cheaper. I think I got, actually got it down to like 170 bucks or something, which is pretty good, you know? That's, and I think I mentioned it in my other videos, just ask, guys. Ask for a cheaper price and you'd be surprised. Even if you save 20 bucks, you know, every time you save 20 bucks, you just have to do that five times and you saved 100 bucks kind of thing. So basic math. Yeah, overall, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with this camera. Um, I've got some videos where I've used this, this microphone outside and it holds up okay outside but it does pick up a lot of other noises and stuff like that so again if you start spending more money on microphones that in the thousands of dollar ranges they'll pick up a lot better more isolated sound use a lav mic that clips on I've got one of those you've probably seen it in some of my older videos um, they work really well outdoors indoors but you know it's a it's a long cable and it hangs off your shirt so it doesn't look the best I prefer this kind of setup because I'm basically free to move and I still get really good audio kind of thing. So yeah, that's that's the microphone. And finally for my lighting, I went through so many different things trying to find a decent way to light my videos. Now lighting is one of the hardest things in my opinion to get your head around. I've ended up settling this thing here, the Photonics Norda S video LED light. This thing I think I paid around about $200 for. Again, probably paid a lot more than what a lot of other people do for, for uh, LED lights. You can pick these things up for like 30 something bucks on amazon.com. But I wanted this one and I've seen it in a store and it just looks really cool. And it really is kind of cool. It's got really good diffusion of its light. You can see that it's just edge lit and then it's got this material that comes over through it and, and diffuses the light really nicely, really spreads the light. As you can tell in the video, overall, it's a pretty good image. Now this thing actually has a decent color range. So it goes from 3,300K to 5,600K Kelvin or however you want to call it. And it's got a brightness range as well. Now I can't tell you that in lumens, but it's pretty Bright. Now this thing here is currently set at, so set at 55% brightness at 5000K. And basically you can turn the brightness up and down. And if you click the button, you can adjust its actual color temperature. But I like mine set around about 5000. Now something that I really like about these um, these two products here that I've got, the, the Terion Field Monitor and the, the Light, is that they both run off the exact same Sony batteries. I'm pretty sure the Terion can actually run off some Canon batteries as well, that's why it's got like this little plate adapter here. But they both run off F9, F970 batteries, or any of the other compatible batteries. I just went for the largest size for the longest battery life. I prefer that kind of thing. 
So yeah, it, it runs really well. This whole setup, this is, that's the basics of my setup. I've also got like a budget. I think this is like an $85, maybe not even that. I don't know, it's a super basic, what do you call it, tripod for my, for my whole setup. This whole setup just sits static almost all the time, so I wasn't too faced when getting a super expensive um, tripod. But in the future, if I do start doing a lot more traveling and moving around, I probably would uh, invest in a more expensive, more rigid uh, tripod. But this one does the perfect job for me right now. It's got a level sensor, it's got panning, it's pretty smooth. It's perfectly fine in, in, in this case for me. So I went with it just a, just a cheap over that. Now, as for this whole thing being glued together, you've probably noticed it by now. I'm rocking a small rig. Now these things are great in my opinion. It's, um, <laughs> it's basically, it, it's, it sets your rig together in the smallest, tightest way possible. Now these cameras obviously aren't, you know, they're generally not probably made to be whole, get the whole cinematic thing going on, but these small rigs allow that to happen. So as long as you can fit it on there, find a way to fit it on there, everything attaches pretty nicely. You know, it's, it looks bulky, it looks stupid, but oh, in my opinion, I think it looks pretty cool. But <laughs> you know, it's definitely just all slapped together and you hope for the best, but it does the job and that's exactly what I needed. So rather than having separate stands everywhere, stand for my light, stand for my monitor, another stand for my, my microphone and all that shit, this just allows it all to be on one setup. I've got my light facing directly towards me at all times. I've got my monitor directly above that and I've got my, and I've got my um, omnidirectional microphone pointing directly at me. That's pretty much it. I've got a whole uh, PC and everything set up that I've got here. If you'd like to know more about this setup that I'm rocking to edit all my videos and, and get everything going there, hit me up in the comments. I'm glad to go through it. I actually unboxed this rig uh, a good while ago on this channel. Uh, it's from PLE Computers and it's done a really, really, really top job ever since then. But if you'd like me to go into more detail about my whole process, yeah, hit me up in the comments and I'll, I'll be happy to go through all that. One final thing, if you're wondering what that over there is, is just a Phillips, uh, not a Phillips, a, it's a TP-Link CASA bulb, I think they call them. Um, it's just an RGB light bulb. Normally you put it in your ceiling. I just found a little, a little base, whatever you call them in Kmart, chucked it at the back there, and that's me light to, to, to give me some backfill light. Makes it look a little bit prettier. It's, it's really basic, but I like minimalistic type of shit, you know? And um, basically, if I've got the light in front of me here, that's stopping um, shadows, or at least big giant shadows from being projected in the background. You can see there's a little bit of shadow behind my hand, but that light eliminates a lot of it. So not only does it look pretty, it's there for a purpose, and that's to make the whole image look nice and flat and uniform. Yeah, I don't know if there's much more that I can go into about this. Um, like I said, if you see anything in this video and you're wondering what it's there for, what its purpose is, hit me up in the comments. I'll explain it to the best ability that I can. Um, yeah, and otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.